Good morning. Welcome to our Cliff Quarantine Reset devotional series, day three. As I've been telling you, this year is called the year of the Bible. And I'm encouraging you to dig deeper into God's word. You will not regret it. Make it a priority in your life. Stop making excuses and letting your excuses get in the way of you spending time with God on a daily basis. It's too important. It's too important to make other things higher priorities. Now, we talked about the disciples the other day, uh, Peter and the rest of the disciples. You know, as we're thinking about resets, for them, when Christ was resurrected and they started living a brand new life, their resurrection for them meant a reset in their life and in their mission and purpose in life. And for us, the resurrection of Jesus is a reset as well. Galatians 2.20 says, uh, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So right there you see, we now, because of the resurrection of Christ, because he defeated sin and death, we now have an opportunity of new life in him. We have a reset of life. And what better time in life to have a reset than a quarantine, where we're forced to stop all the normal things that we were doing and slow down. And so now we have this opportunity to look back at what all of our priorities were before the quarantine and make some judgment calls and say, okay, well, this is what I want to commit my priorities to after the quarantine. This is that perfect time to think about all that, to go to God's word, to pray to him and ask him to help you have wise and God honoring priorities in your life. So let's commit to, to praying to him about that together. Yesterday, we were looking at Solomon because a huge part of this focus for our devotional series is Ecclesiastes. And Solomon is, is thought to probably have been the writer. Now, Solomon's life was crazy, okay? And he eventually lost focus and took his eyes off of the Lord. And so my question for you is, where is your focus? Are you focused on God? Are you running the race for yourself? Are you building a kingdom for yourself? Are your eyes fixed on Jesus? Do you have an attitude of surrender to him? And, and just basically, how are you gonna live your life? What are your priorities going to be? So as we're thinking about priorities, in day one, I asked the question, what is one thing besides yourself that you tend to give more priority than God? And really that is a question of what is a big idol that you struggle with? So the word idol and priorities can sometimes be interchanged. And so we're kind of thinking about priorities that take precedent over God in our life, things that were that shouldn't, but we're allowing to, and so those are really idols. Okay, so let's think about that. In your, uh, in your book, your journal, I want you to set aside, so you got day one in there, you got day two. Now, before you take notes for day three, or you can do it afterward, I want you to set aside four pages, four blank pages. These are going to be pages that throughout our studies through Ecclesiastes, we're going to look back at these and add on things throughout our study through the book. On the first page, I want you to write in big, bold letters up top, idols slash priorities. And you can put a big underline underneath. Okay, you can put your first one down that you wrote on day one. And then under that, I want you to write three idols or priorities that in general, the world looks to. I'll give you one example, money. The world loves money. Uh, a lot of people, if not most people, struggle with making money an idol in their life, okay? And so it's, it's taking a higher priority than God. So you could write down your one from Monday, or Tuesday rather, day one, and then maybe money, and two more. 
Anything that you personally struggle with next to it, I want you to put an asterisk. So now as you look at it, you say, okay, these are things that are just idols for all sorts of people in the world. And these ones are specific ones that I struggle with. So do that now. Let's pray as we get started in Ecclesiastes. Father, you are so good to us and you love us. You have not forsaken us during this quarantine. Social distancing does not apply to you, God. You are with us, you are working in our lives, and you are helping us. I pray that you would help us to draw closer to you, help our faith to grow, help us to understand your word better and understand our, our new identity, our reset identity in you better. And Lord, that you would help us as we are looking to looking at our priorities and our idols, that you would help us submit to you as number one in our life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's open up to Ecclesiastes 1. We're just gonna read one and two today. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. That's how it starts. Okay, it's not a very encouraging and uplifting start. But this word that's translated in the NIV as meaningless comes from this Hebrew word hebel. It's a difficult word to translate. On your second blank page, at the top, you can either put hebel or you can put meaningless and then in big bold letters and then underline it. And under that, you're gonna, you're gonna write these first four ideas. And then we're going, as we're going through the book, you're gonna see this word meaningless come up over and over again. And, and so you're gonna go back to this page and just add on how Solomon or the writer is using this word. Okay, the King James Version uh, translated this as vanity. Okay, and it's not vanity where you're staring in a mirror all day so focused on your looks. It's this idea of futility, basically. And that's exactly how the Living Bible translates the word. Futile or not worthwhile. The message tr translates it as smoke. Okay, so something that you can't really hold on to. It looks like it has a physical appearance, but it's just a vapor in the wind, a gas. And... I think a good understanding of this word, hebel, or meaningless, is the idea of fallen. That we're in a fallen world, so it's messed up. It's messed up, it's not the way it should be. Or, this idea of the inability to satisfy. As I've been looking through the book, it, it almost seems like it's always about something that people try to use to satisfy, but it's, not able to satisfy fully. So write those down, vanity, futile, not worthwhile, smoke, fallen, unable to satisfy. And we're just gonna add on to that. So you got that whole page to add on throughout our study of the book. Okay, so now I'm gonna have you uh, pause this and look at Genesis 3. You're gonna read through the whole chapter. So we saw Solomon and we, got, we get a little bit perspective on, on his life, and now we're gonna get an even more historical perspective and see about the world we live in. So read through all of Genesis 3, and then on your day three notes, write some of the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin. So welcome back. Genesis 3 is a tragic, chapter in the Bible, but we have to understand it to really get a full picture of what's going on in God's word and in our lives, and especially in the book of Ecclesiastes. Adam and Eve disobey, sin enters the world, the world gets all bent out of shape, okay, so work is affected, relationships are affected, and pain and death are crouching at the door of life, right? And that's the world that we live in. And that's the world that the writer of Ecclesiastes 
lives in and that's what he's writing about so everywhere you look in this world it just seems like there's injustice sorrow and frustration everywhere so here we get to our third blank page okay on your third blank page at the very top in bold letters I want you to write frustrations frustrations and underline that and I want you to take a minute right now to write down some of your frustrations as you look around at this world. So as you wrote down some frustrations of yours, as we go through the book of Ecclesiastes, you're going to see some of Solomon's or the writer's frustrations. And so you're, we're going to add the, these to the list later. And you're going to be able to say, yeah, those, those are frustrating things. But that's not it. On the fourth blank page, on the very top in bold writing, I want you to write glimpses of hope and put an underline. And we're not going to write anything under it yet. We'll fill that in as we go through the book. But there are glimpses of hope in the book that God is going to judge evil. But the writer of Ecclesiastes doesn't seem to know about hope in Jesus, that the Messiah is going to one day come and set things right. He doesn't seem to see the big picture. But for us, we know that God has a much bigger plan for us and the world to experience freedom and true, full life, and it's really only through Jesus. So as we close this morning, I want you to watch the song on YouTube, think about the words, and then read Psalm 30, and let it lead you into a time of prayer as we close out our devotional this morning. I pray that you have a great day and you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus.